What if you had a complete yearly record of all of your health care measurements, dating back to your birth? Do you think that that could make for better health care decisions? If you said yes, stay tuned for Health Politics. Welcome to Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee, a weekly program exploring important trends in health. If we allow ourselves to dream of a better health care system, one that permits us to feel connected, supported, and in control of our own health destiny, two words come to mind, information and planning. The more information we have about our own health history and genetic profile, the smarter we can be about making health decisions and planning our healthcare future. This requires, of course, a constant available record of our changing health status. But if you switch doctors or you go to the hospital for surgery, you'll find that your nation's health records are not even close to this ideal. They're splintered and poorly organized at best. To their credit, doctors and hospitals have been trying to create a coordinated system of electronic records, but it falls far short of what we actually need. The real key to our health information future, one I'll describe in just a moment, is a concept called lifespan planning record. This computer-based and integrated model would provide a holistic view of your health, stretching all the way back to your ancestors and projecting far forward into your future so you'll know what you can anticipate as your body ages. It helps define health as much more than the absence of illness. It's about life fulfillment. With lifespan planning, we can start to concentrate on preventive activities in health, which is just about all that the experts say must happen if we're to fix our broken healthcare system. It will also make our healthcare system safer because the information we use will be more reliable. Don Detmer, president of the American Medical Informatics Association, said it best, quotes, significant improvements in healthcare safety and quality will not be achieved for Americans without robust, secure electronic health records within a national health information infrastructure, close quotes. Implementing lifespan planning records won't be easy, as you can imagine, there are large technological and logistical hurdles. But we can at least start to sort out what some of the issues are. Let's have a look. The first thing you should know is that some of healthcare's most important players are spending significant time on the question of record keeping. From the American Medical Informatics Association to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. Much of the challenge for groups like these is in determining how to build a system around what is essentially a moving target. Which parts of the plan should be derived from technology of the present, technology of the future, and technology from the distant future? To adequately address these questions, let's look at the trends. First, longer lifespans are moving us from three-generation families to four- and five-generation families with more complicated health management needs. Second, the health consumer movement is in full swing, with consumers carving out more and more empowered positions and roles and demanding reform. And third, information technology is advancing to provide new linkages between patient and caregiver and mind-boggling possibilities for data storage and exchange. As these trends intersect, they're rapidly changing the very drawing board that is being used to plan for a new national health record system. Here's what I mean. Over the last decade, the discussion about healthcare records has focused on electronic medical records, or EMRs, and aspired to improve accuracy and efficiency by converting paper-based systems used by doctors and nurses in hospitals to electronic formats. Now, that's a worthy goal. But as leaders diligently began this conversion, the environment began to shift underfoot, thanks largely to our three intersecting trends. In fact, by 2005, it had become quite clear to many leaders in the field that the record properly resided with the patient from whom health data emerged, 
and that the data that flowed through the hands of hospitals and doctors and nurses was only a part of the overall picture. Thus, the concept of a personal health record has gradually subsumed the vision of an electronic medical record. This is a good development. The personal health record combines data, knowledge, and software tools which help patients become participants in their own health care. But if we're to truly anticipate where health care trends are taking us, even this is not enough. It's now clear that in a truly preventive system, health is not a collection of late-stage reactive interventions. That kind of thinking will soon be a relic of the past. Rather, health should be defined as a life fully lived, hopeful, productive, fulfilling, rewarding, and manageable. The determinants of such a life begin before birth, embedded in the healthful behaviors of one's future parents, and they extend beyond death to one's survivors. Considering this broader view of health, the right concept for our health record system should be a lifespan planning record, or LPR. The LPR for a single individual born today could extend out at least 100 years. It would include all of the baseline medical information needed by patients and much more. It would consider economic, social, educational, and spiritual goals and milestones, as well as medical and scientific objectives. Born today, the newborn child's plan would already be inhabited with a great deal of data. Some reasonable compilation of the records of parents, grandparents, and siblings would be represented. Future diagnostic and preventative therapeutic measures based on familial information would be flagged on the timeline. Print, video, and graphic information from other accessible intelligence databases would be seamlessly interwoven for easy use by the people caring for each other and this new global citizen. As time passes, this living record would flexibly grow and adjust to assist informed decision-making, preventive behavior, and full and complete human development. Where will the knowledge come from? Patients, obviously, will need to contribute to the personal side of the record. On the health and science side, it will emerge from three electronic data sources. The clinical research data space, the continuing professional development data space, and the continuing consumer education data space. These data sources will desegregate and converge to allow integrated use of the information they contain by the people, the people caring for the people, and investigators searching for new solutions to today's unresolved problems. Obviously, many issues will need to be sorted out, not the least of which are confidentiality, patient privacy, and the control over records. But the bottom line is that as quickly as the electronic medical record is being subsumed by the personal health record, this personal health record is now being subsumed by the need for lifespan planning records, because that's the best way to move all of us toward a preventive health care system. For Health Politics, I'm Mike McGee. Thank you for watching Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee. For more information on this topic, please visit our related web links, discussion guide, or downloadable transcript and slides. For videos and information on a variety of other health topics, visit our homepage at healthpolitics.org. If you would like to subscribe to our free weekly video, click on Subscribe to Health Politics and enter your email address. Again, thank you for watching.